Hey guys, I don't know about you, but I recently got bombarded on YouTube with videos involving the mysterious substance of Starlight. Starlight first went viral in the 1970s and 80s after it got presented in a BBC TV show called Tomorrow's World. It is a type of plastic that can withstand enormous temperatures of over 10,000 degrees Celsius or 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The recipe got kept secret by the inventor Maurice Ward, a former barber and hairdresser from Hartlepool in England. In the original video you see an egg covered in a blanket of starlight that gets blasted with a propane torch for minutes, revealing an egg that is not even warm. The starlight material on the other side is cold to the touch only a few seconds after blowing it with a 2000 degrees propane torch. Ward passed away in 2011 and took with him the unique recipe for starlight. He once mentioned that his close family knows the fabrication process, but since neither his wife nor any of his four daughters have produced any sample to demonstrate that they know the process, Starlight still comprehends some kinds of myth today. But there were some information Maurice gave people on the way. What we know is that it's supposed to be a blend of about 21 ingredients. Most of them are organic and some are inorganic polymers, copolymers and small amounts of ceramics that are bound together using PVA glue. Copycat videos popped up since ever trying to recreate the properties and recently recipes started to pop up all over the internet and lots of YouTube channels tried their luck with burning homemade starlight to dust. Sure for me I need to find out if a focused 40 watt laser beam will penetrate to homemade starlight. Therefore I made up three batches of starlight here. Two are made from recipes I found on Google and one that I made up my own using a blend of polymers and fire retardant substances. The first one here is the most simple one, only containing baking soda and PVA glue. The second one contains one part of baking soda, two parts of cornstarch and PVA glue. Then I have a material that you certainly know when you forgot to turn off your toaster. It's simply bread that I put into aluminum foil to keep out oxygen and let it carbonize for around 30 minutes in the oven. This leaves us with a foam-like material made of mostly carbon and air. What is a fantastic insulator? The third substance here I call Starlight Light. I made it up myself. Using a blend of different things mostly containing unorganic polymers we use in the special effects industry that are found to be relatively heat resistant. If this works, I will probably be gone after this video as I jump into my private plane and leave to my private man cave island as I became a millionaire. If it's not working 100% similar to Starlight, I will tell you what's in there at the end of the video. Now, Starlight is known for the ability to absorb temperatures of over 10,000 degrees without any major impact on the material. That bears the question, what temperature does a K40 laser beam even have? Now, this is a pretty complicated question as a laser beam itself does not have any temperature at all. It is made out of photons. A laser beam has a certain energy that can be absorbed or deflected from the material you try to cut. But there is a lot of math involved to find out how much energy gets absorbed in the first place. You have to include many factors such as the color of the material, the focal point diameter, the heat deflection and mass of the working material, the actual current that gets inducted to create the laser beam, the duration of the impulse and many other aspects. But the most questionable thing is that we don't know what starlight is actually made of. So calculating the laser's inducted energy is quite impossible. Anyhow, I would guess the temperature inducted to our starlight to be around 2000 degrees centigrade or 3632 degrees Fahrenheit on a spot that is even thinner than a needle point. So a lot of energy. Is this energy enough to penetrate through homemade starlight? We are about to find out. Starting off with the simplest recipe, which is only bacon soda and PVA glue that I mixed together um, and formed it to a dough into this disc shape yesterday and let it dry overnight. So I prepared a simple square in coral laser that I tried to cut out of the starlight using maximum power on the K4D laser and um, the speed will be 5 mm per second and I will give it a double pass.
pretty interesting. It actually penetrated more than I thought. I will move on with the next one and we will have a closer look after I finished all of them. you could smell this it smells like burning plastic um, it really does not smell like food or burning you know burning bread or toast or whatever um, what I thought it would be because it's basically cornstarch and baking soda but it smells more like burning a PCB or something let's take this out and let's move on to the next one which will be our burnt toast actually curious to see what happens with this thing and I'm also curious about the smell that it will produce when all right double pass let's go first experiment is done I tried to cut the square at maximum output power watt on the k40 is around 35 watts and a slow cutting speed at 5 millimeters per second as we can see here we have visual markings on all of our samples as to be expected but could the laser beam penetrate the material on the first sample we can see some markings and I feel a light ridge when I scrape with my finger over it so we have some minor penetration but that was to be expected as well because when the material carbonizes at the impact point the carbon acts as a shield to protect the underlying material from the heat in this macro shot you can nicely see how there are sprinkles of carbon but that gives an indication that this might be a problem as the carbon layer is not consistent. What means on a third and fourth pass, the laser keeps penetrating deeper and deeper into the material. The second sample looks less promising on the first look. You can see a deeper groove that is approximately 0.5 mm deep, so quite disappointing. But on the macro, you can clearly see a continuous layer of carbon. So it now gets way harder to penetrate further through the material. Very interesting so far. Interesting will be the bread as well, as it already is carbonized. It is more a sort of carbon foam at this point. It is hard to see due to the contrast, but the laser burned a nicely visible groove, probably vaporized the material as it is very thin and brittle. Due to its low density, the laser has it much easier to burn through this material. Now my top secret starlight material. It looks way more burnt, and it seems we have the same issue as with the first material, as we can see on the macro. The carbon layer is not dense, causing more and more material to get vaporized by the laser, what causes this material to fail probably after a couple of passes. Very interesting first result. This gives us a nice indicator how the product is supposed to work. In the second experiment I will expose each sample a 5 second burst of full power laser light on one spot. Therefore I use my stopwatch here and start the laser at 5 seconds for 5 seconds. Okay, experiment number two of firing a constant 5 second laser beam to starlight is done. So let's have a look at the first disc. That only consists of baking soda and PVA glue. If you notice, the laser beam got reflected relatively bright in the beginning and got very weak after the first second. To me that indicates that the laser went through though, and that after a little bit more than a second already. And yes, that just went through no problem. So, starlight recipe numero uno has failed. Moving to the second recipe, containing cornstarch and baking soda. On the first look, it looks a little bit more burnt than the first one, but in this case it means there has more carbon formed. What actually is exactly what we want? 
no hole. But okay, you will say um, the disc is quite a little bit thicker, so maybe that gives the disc a little advantage. We will see on the third experiment if that's really true. Let's take a look at the carbon foam or carbonized bread. I look at it closely against a light source, but as you may see on the macro, I cannot find any hole that goes through. Not bad. Disc number four? Very little charring, as on the first disc, what makes me worry that the beam went right through. And yes, we have the full penetration. That means disc 4, Man Cave Island, you're out. Dang it. Okay, that leaves us with the two favorites. This is disc number 2, containing the cornstarch and baking soda, and our carbonized bread, alias carbon foam. Experiment number 3 will be direct laser penetration of 10 seconds on a single spot. Let's go. Okay, 10 seconds of my K40's laser light leave an even bigger charm mark. What is okay? You clearly see the difference between 5 and 10 seconds here. But now, has it penetrated through? No, it hasn't. What a surprise. This is quite fascinating. Let's have a look at the carbon foam. It is very hard to see, but after further inspection against the light source, I could find a tiny hole that went through though. It took me a while to get this framed up in the macro shot, if you look right, you see some very little light shining through. Okay, that means carbon foam or carbonized bread is out as well. That leaves us with the winner so far, the cornstarch and baking soda homemade starlight. Experiment 4 will be a full blast of 15, 20 and 30 seconds on three different spots. Alright, sure again, even bigger burn marks, but for my guess none of them made it through though. And yeah, this stuff holds up pretty well. Okay, so I could just end it here, but I really want to see if I can get through. So I will burn the heck out of this thing. I put my little action cam underneath the laser bed so we see when the laser starts to get through the starlight. Let's go! Okay, so I give it two burns of one minute each, with a two minute break in between to let the laser cool down, but as for now I can't see any hole there. I must confess I did not believe this stuff hold up that long. It seems to work pretty well for a homemade thing that does not need much preparation. Fascinating. As a conclusion, if you want experimenting with homemade starlight, the recipe with cornstarch and baking soda is the way to go. It is the cornstarch that gets carbonized and builds up a pretty heat resistant layer. Also the carbonized bread made a pretty good heat shield regarding that it will disintegrate over time when exposed to very high temperatures. All in all, a super interesting test. And for those who want to know what I put in my own concoction of starlight, it was SAP, a super absorbent polymer that we used to make snow slush for movies. During the winter months you often can find it as insta snow in a lot of stores. For my case I mixed it with talcum powder and baking soda, but my theory of making a foam-like polymer disc went totally wrong and resonated after only two rounds. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if so please leave me a thumbs up and if you want to see more K40 related videos I have a whole playlist with laser videos and many other interesting projects. Please subscribe and ring the bell, that helps my channel to gain some momentum on YouTube. Thanks for that, until then, see ya!